Welcome to the Woman Warriors Podcast, where we're working to help you call a truce with your anxiety. The information in this podcast is not a substitute for seeking help from a licensed mental health professional. Now, here's your host, Elizabeth Cush, LCPC. Welcome back to the Woman Warriors podcast. This week, my guest is Nicole Burgess. She is an empowerment mentor for introverted women. And this week, we're going to be exploring what it means to be an introvert, how introverted women need to take care of themselves, and how anxiety impacts you if you are introverted. So I hope you enjoy the conversation for the second time around for Nicole being on the podcast. Thanks for tuning in and listening. This week's episode is sponsored by Progression Counseling, providing Maryland residents with individual, group, and online counseling for the overstressed, overwhelmed, and overanxious. Find out more at progressioncounseling.com. Hey, Nicole, welcome back to the Woman Warriors podcast. Thank you so much for having me back, Elizabeth. I'm excited about our conversation today. Me too. Me too. So Nicole was a guest very early on in my podcasting venture, and um, we talked about women and daughters and anxiety, but today we're going to do something different, and I'm actually kind of excited because um, I... Don't as we just said a few minutes ago before we began recording, is that there is this myth that if you're anxious, that means you're introverted, and that's really not true. So we're going to be talking about what it means to be an introverted woman and how you can take care of yourself. So Nicole, could you talk to us a little bit about you and your business? Yeah. So my so-called title that I put out there is, you know, the introvert empowerment mentor. And really what that is, is I, my mission is to empower women and standing in their own truth and finding their own wisdom and leading their, their life that through their strengths and that wisdom. And the majority of my clientele are introverted women. And oftentimes what I hear, like what we're going to talk about is, oh, I'm an introvert. So that means I'm really shy and I'm anxious. And those are two separate things. Introversion is nothing more than where do you get your energy from, right? And Mm -hmm. for most of us introverts, it's needing some downtime, some quiet time. But we also really enjoy deep conversations with other people. So it, sometimes it can look like being an extrovert, but ultimately then we need to kind of take a step back and go read or go walk in nature, but have some of that quiet time. And it has nothing to do with being shy or socially anxious or anything like that. Mm. And I think you identify yourself as an introvert. Is that correct? Absolutely. Yes, <laughs> For the Meyer Briggs folks out there, I'm an INFJ. Mm-hmm. And for those who are have the understanding of the highly sensitive person, I am also on that as well, which is Elaine Aaron's work. Mm-hmm. So both of those, the NF and the HSP piece of those identifiers is more of that sensitivity and more of the intuitive and the feeling piece of it. Yeah. Yeah. We had, uh, I had April Snow on the podcast talking about highly sensitive people and introversion. And, and so like, when did you recognize that maybe you were introverted? It was more when I was in my early twenties and I was in college. Um, My major was in accounting yet my under or my minor in that was in uh, psychology. And there was, I can't remember which class I was in, but we were talking about that. And that's really when I'm like, oh, yeah, that's totally me. (laughs) 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 Because I love just having more of that quiet time, being able to read. And I see that really with my parents and my brother as well. There's a lot of introversion within the family, not a lot of extroversion. We're like, oh, we've got to be in a lot of social functions and going out and doing things all the time. And that's where we get our energy. It's like, no, 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 the quiet is good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and how, I mean, it, it makes sense to me that 
you know, being an introvert, it it's you're able to mentor other introverted women because you get it and you understand what you need to thrive. But how has being an introvert sort of impacted you, your business, your life? Yeah, so here in the U.S., it, it, from my perspective, I think we do a lot of pushing people to be something that they're not. There's a lot of reinforcement for the hustle to be more extroverted. And what happens is there's a disconnect. Mm -hmm. And I have totally gotten caught up in that myself at different times through growing my business and just being in the world, right? Mm -hmm. And I know when I work with clients for women, it's really helping them understand that there's a lot of strength being an introvert. And depending on those other three letters that go along after that, also impacts what their strengths are versus trying to be somebody that they're not or trying to fit into I say like you're trying to fit into the circle when you're actually star shaped. Mm. And it's being able to say it's okay for me to be the shape that I am to be who I am. And I can really have a very joyful and thriving life because I'm no longer trying to not be something I don't need to be. If that makes sense. It does. It makes so much sense. And I would guess that when maybe if you're not recognizing yourself as introverted and you're pushing yourself maybe to do more or put yourself out there in ways or, you know, not giving yourself the space to sort of regenerate your energy, um, that could create a little anxiety. Oh, absolutely. Because then that thought process becomes, oh, there must be something wrong with me. I'm not keeping up with so and so. Then you get into the comparison. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes what I hear is, well, I'm really shy. Well, that's social anxiety. Because part of the social anxiety criteria is you're afraid of being judged or criticized by people. The reality is you don't have any control over anybody else but yourself. Yeah. So when I call it the fear gremlins, when they get up in your ear and they're talking to you like, well, you need to do more, you're not doing enough, you're not doing it that good, perfectly, whatever, that's when you're starting to no longer pay attention to, well, wait a minute, am I really in my own flow? Am I in that listening to my body, listening to my inner wisdom to help slow things down? And that's the thing. When we slow things down, you actually become more productive. Yeah. Yeah. I totally yeah. get that. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's the biggest challenge is when we start, whether you call it the inner critic, the saboteur, the gremlins, whatever it may be, it is so much about, okay, what do I need right now to calm myself down? What do I need to do to be able to stay in touch with where I'm at? And then when that anxiety goes down, it's like, okay, now I, let me take that step forward. Mm. And it's almost... Um as if you're giving yourself permission to just be who you are and yes. go from there instead of trying to meet all these external expectations. Right. And, and I know you talk on your show as well, the self-care piece, right? Where women, mm. we in general, especially moms, yeah. there is so much of that pressure to be the superwoman, to be everything and anything. And there are another, that in and of itself is a big clash. When you add being an introvert on top of that, then it's more like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm definitely not doing enough. Or those are some of the messages that happen. And it's also saying, you know, first and foremost, I'm a, I'm a woman and it's okay for me to take breaks. It's okay for me to tell my family, hey, I need about 30 minutes of quiet. Mm. And then when you rejuvenate, then you have the ability to be more present with everybody versus irritable and, you know, you know, frustrated. <laughs> There's so much noise going on. If you give me a second, I'm sorry, I'm sounding like I'm all over, but my dog has decided to be scratchy and everything else. I'm going to go put him in the back room really quick. Okay, perfect. Uh huh. So, Nicole, you're mentioning that, um, you know, giving yourself permission to take care of yourself when you're an introvert is really important. And I would like you to sort of expand on what self-care might look like for someone who, uh, you know, a woman who is introverted. So it can look all different ways for women, as we know. And I think part of that is getting curious, like what truly does 
restore your batteries? What lights you up where you're like, oh my gosh, when I do this activity, I feel more connected to myself. So I know for many introverted women, it's reading. Mm -hmm. I also know taking a walk in nature can be really restorative as well. And if you have little ones, role modeling that self-care or quiet time is also a way to help teach them some self-soothing and calming ways to do things too. Meditation is one of my go-tos for the restoration as well, where I can just truly get quiet and listen to my intuition that comes up or connecting with source. And it just Mm. gets my day going. (laughs) Yeah, me too. Me too. I am a huge advocate of meditation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and, and, you know, what's interesting to me, just as you said, getting your day going and starting your day. um, I think that meditation can really help with just setting the tone of your day. You know, if you begin with that quiet time. To piggyback off of that, it is for many, many sensitive people, for the introverted, and and I get if if you're a mom and you've got little ones or even teenagers and you're trying to get everybody out the door, being able to start some of that day in a slower pace or a quieter pace, as you said, it really can set the tone. So they don't, you don't need to do like 30 minutes of meditation to say, okay, I've got it. Sometimes as little as like two minutes Mm -hmm. can help you get recentered and grounded is what we talk about. And what I mean by that is staying connected to your body for anxiety, right? We know we're very much up in our head. Yeah. And it's all about the thoughts that are running through and latching onto them. Like, oh my gosh, I got to run with the story that it's telling me. And when you're grounded, you're more tapped into your body and you're paying attention to your breath and knowing it's like, okay, this is just a moment in time. And maybe I'm riding the wave of anxiety that it doesn't need to run me the whole day. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I can notice it, but not latch onto it, as you said, yes. not saying like, this is going to be how my day goes. Yeah. And, um, I was looking over your website and when I listened to your podcast, The Soul Filled Sisterhood, which is really awesome and amazing, you mention talking about growing up as a good girl and how you transition that into adulthood and what that looks like. So is is there um, a connection between the good girl and being an introvert and anxiety potentially? Yeah, I think there's more of a connection with the good girl. When I talk about that with women, it's growing up where you are trying to get your parents approval on things. And then you continue to do that when you're an adult, Mm -hmm. getting other people trying to be the people pleaser, you know, some people refer to as a nice girl versus good girl. Mm -hmm. So whatever title you give it, when you aren't, again, true to yourself, it does create anxiety. And it doesn't matter whether you're an introvert or you're an extrovert. It's more of, am I staying and doing this out of obligation versus speaking my truth, standing up for myself, setting boundaries that I need to be set. And when we don't do that, and what typically I see within clientele, it's still behaving as if you're an adolescent, like, oh, I've got to get the good grades because my mom and dad's love for me was very conditional. It's, you know, you're still living that way as an adult. And it's like, no, you're now an adult. And so it's literally growing up and being you. You're the one who is responsible for your life. You have the ability to make these choices. You're no longer under your parents' roof or living underneath their so-called rules, it's being your full adult self. Mm. And when you're not, yeah, there can be a lot of stress and anxiety about like, well, if I stand up for myself, maybe they won't like me. That's true. Person, when you set a boundary, they may not like you. Mm -hmm. And especially if they're, especially if they're used (laughs) to you always saying yes or doing what they want you to do. Correct. (laughs) Correct. And it's that then gives you information to become more informed about your decisions within that relationship. And the more that you are assertive and you have those healthy boundaries, your confidence level grows. So anxiety levels go down. Mm, Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so 
Do you feel, and I may be totally off base here, but just thinking about being an introvert, is it harder for introverts to say what they need and set those firm boundaries, especially around self-care and, but also just speaking up for their own needs? I'm going to say no, because that to me is more Mm fear-based, right? Mm -hmm. It's not where, where do you get your energy from? That's more of, oh, I don't want to disappoint somebody or I don't want somebody to be disappointed in me or mad at me. So I'm just going to stay silent. Mm. Which, again, is going to grow your own anxieties and fears Mm -hmm. versus, you know, I need to take this time away because my batteries are totally low and I can't be present for you and I really want to be and it doesn't mean I don't love you. It's just I need to have this to recharge and then I can come back and be fully here for you. Mm. But maybe here I'm going to jump to conclusions or whatever assumptions that maybe if you were a child who was an introvert and weren't given the time to recharge and reset or weren't validated in those needs, then maybe, you know, you would then have some hesitation around speaking up for yourself. Yes. And I was shaking my head. Yes. The whole time. Yeah. (laughs) Because there again, I'm telling you who you are. Yes. Versus honoring who you are. Mm. And that is where that fear stuff begins to build, right? Mm-hmm. If if you are if the parent is not tuned into the 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 girl, right? Mm-hmm. The daughter. Yep. Then I'm going to begin to grow up like I need to behave this certain way in order to feel love and to feel safe and, you know, whatever. Yet when they are tuned in, and I mean tuned in like honoring, okay, they need some quiet time versus me trying to pull them all over the place and do all these errands. It's like, that's too much stimulation for them. They need to have some quiet. Then it becomes more of a secure, secure attachment and loving environment. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, there's a big difference again. Like I need to be a good girl to get this type of so-called reward or positive feedback Mm -hmm. ends up generating more fear and anxiety. Then when you come from the the nurtured background, you're not going to have that. Yeah, yeah, because you will have been seen and it will be honored that, you know, there are these times that you need to step back and recharge and regenerate that energy. And so that will feel okay and empowering and validating. Yes, yes. Very nice. So talk to me a little bit about how you work with your um, empowerment mentoring of introverted women. So oftentimes how I really start is I want women to go back and really explore their values and are they actually living from those values? Sometimes, you know, as we, as we grow older, our values will shift and change, but we'd forget to go back and relook at that. Hmm. And then if we're more like, oh, I've got to do what everybody else wants again, kind of behind the mask, that persona there, then we're not living out of our life. So when women go back and start there, we then begin to say, okay, now you do this, this and this decision. Now, is that in alignment with what these values are you're saying that you're wanting in your life and that that represent you? Mm -hmm. And when they're not, then it's saying, okay, so what do you want to do differently? So it's really helping women. And I work a lot with women I I consider like in the midlife or maybe they've got older children. When if they do still have younger ones at home, they're trying to find more of that what I call harmony because balance is a big myth to everybody's like, I want balance in my life. It's like, yeah, there's no such thing as true balance. (laughs) But, But what is the harmony between your professional and your personal life? You know, some do a lot of just working and then they forget to go have fun. Mm-hmm. So when we look at that value system, then we begin to look at all the areas of life and then making sure are they in alignment or what do they need to do differently? Maybe there's something that needs to let go because it was nothing more than a habit and that drains them. Mm-hmm. And then changing and saying, let's do this. And that energizes them. So they have more capacity to do, I don't know, a spiritual practice or their um, marriage or social fund, whatever that is. Yeah. And that's really what I do a lot. But the universal thing with the women I work with, right, is those core fears that come up of I'm not enough, I'm not lovable. 
those things mm. that it's like, oh yeah, that's universal. And let's begin to challenge those thoughts. Mm. Yeah, boy, such a theme for women. Um, mm. Yeah, that I'm not enough. I'm not good enough. Well, yeah. yeah. And, and teaching self-compassion and accepting those parts and releasing a lot of those are old beliefs that again, were taught or heard really when well before like nine years old, but mm -hmm. they get cemented in there and it's beginning to shift those limiting beliefs and saying, okay, let's come from a more empowered stance then. Yeah. I think just that whole piece of really honoring your values in your life can be, I mean, it's as if you're listening to yourself, right? Mm -hmm. You're mm -hmm. really hearing yes. what it is you need and what's important to you. And that's so important. That's such a valuable tool. Right. It, it is. And, and it's funny, you know, I've, I've literally, I have my values. They're stuck on an index card and they're up on my wall. So when I am working and I've, it's like, oh, do I want to do this, you know, task, you know, or be on, maybe it's a podcast, right? Mm -hmm. or write this up or do this. Is that in alignment with me growing? Is it creative? Is it adventurous? You know, those are the things and, and does it connect me to other people? Mm -hmm. So those are part of my value systems. And if it doesn't meet those criteria, then it's a no. And I move on. Nice. Very, very nice. I love that idea of having that right there. So it reminds you of what you want to connect to. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. So introversion isn't anxiety. And it's, it's, you can be an anxious introvert, but they're not the same thing. Correct. Yeah, yeah. And I just want to say, I appreciate your sort of clarifying that, but also just honoring that as introverts, like this isn't a, this isn't like a negative thing. This is just part right. of who you are. And I think that, I mean, you just hit it right there, Elizabeth. So many times when I'm talking with women, it's like, oh, I thought that was a bad thing that I was more quiet mm. or that when I enter a social situation that I stand and I observe and I'm like, well, that's normal for many introverts. Mm -hmm. It's like you kind of assess the situation and who is there and you, all that stimulation that is coming in, you gotta like, okay, let me reorient myself. And then you begin to engage. That's right. normal. That's not like, wow, there must be absolutely something wrong with you. It's like, no, those are your strengths. Because you can do that. Yeah. Just stepping back and evaluating and figuring out where you want to put your energy. Yes. In a place that maybe feels overwhelming initially. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Nicole, thank you so much for sharing all of this information about introverts. And I, I think that, well, for men and women who are introverted, it's empowering just to normalize the experience and mm -hmm. validate that that's just where they are and who they are. Yeah. And I would really encourage if people aren't sure, you know, if they're introverted or extroverted or not, there's a lot of great like free tests that are, you know, online, they can Google that and the Myers-Briggs stuff and just mm -hmm. get a, an idea of where they are and then read more about it. Mm -hmm. Because when you understand more of like, oh, that's, more of my personality. And, and Ray Lincoln, he's another one where I had interviewed another guest that she studied under him. And that's more inner kinetics. And that's more of temperaments. So he explains things slightly different than the Myers-Briggs regarding personalities. And there's a ton of great information on that. And it really can help parents also understand their children more. And that's really where it came from to understand his children. And he's helped so many parents with that as well. Well, and I think that's the the core of of being comfortable in your introversion mm -hmm. is if it starts off that way. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, not that we can't build it later in life, but mm -hmm. but that's an important piece too, is for parents to understand what what an introverted child needs. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And, and if you're, you know, an adult woman, like we're talking about, and you didn't receive that growing up, now is an opportunity for you to nurture that little one in you Mm -hmm. so that she feels really seen and heard. And then you begin to really embrace those strengths of yourself versus thinking that, oh, they're not, these these are my weaknesses. It's like, no, those are truly your strengths. Mm, I love that. I love the whole idea of nurturing that inner child of needs that love and compassion. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your podcast and anything else that's coming up in your practice that you would like the listeners to know about. So my podcast, as you mentioned before, it's a soul-filled sisterhood. And most of the guests that I interview are introverts. Now I have a few that have, they're like more extroverted or ambiverts, but it's more about the how they've worked through that or even noticed how some of that has changed over the years as they've gotten older. And so I have just a wide variety of topics that we talk about from being an entrepreneur to being a parent, to being a mamapreneur, you know, all those fun things. And nice. oftentimes I'm interviewing people just because I'm curious about the topic. And so <laughs> just like, oh, hopefully that will, you know, somebody will like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think yeah. that's the best part about having a podcast is you can do it the way you want to. Yeah, exactly. And if anybody is interested in actually um Uh, watching the webinar that I've done, or I call it kind of the workshop about the good girl meets the spiritually awakened woman, they can go out to Nicole Burgess coaching.com forward slash good girl workshop, and they can sign up and then they can watch that if they would like to. Awesome. Very cool. Well, thank you. Are there any tips or anything that you would last things you would like to share here on the podcast? Yeah, I think if women are really interested in understanding introversion a little more, many people I know have heard of Susan Cain's book, Quiet. Mm. There is another book, um, I want to say it's The Power of the Introvert, and it's by Dr. Lori, and I'm going to blank on her last name, I think it's Holgo, Holgi. Um, I'll look it up and add it in the show notes. Yeah, Mm -hmm. but I think I love that book and I recommend The Power of the Introvert to many, many clients. And when they do, they're like, oh my gosh, she's talking to me. Oh, (laughs) that's so great. Yeah. So again, just beginning to understand more of those characteristics and qualities and knowing that you're okay. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. And quote unquote, normal. (laughs) Yes. Yes, exactly. Although I hate that word, but whatever. I do too. Oh, well, thanks again for being on the podcast. I really appreciate your coming back and sharing your yourself, but also your knowledge about introverted women and how we can help support them. Well, thank you so much for having me on, Elizabeth. I just appreciate, one, all the work that you are doing oh, to help thanks. raise the awareness about anxiety and truly how to manage it. Mm. And just, yeah, the topics and just helping people that are truly around the world where they have access to the information. So thank you again for having me on. Mm, no worries. I, I hope you'll come back again in the future. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thanks. I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Nicole Burgess. She is a wealth of information about being an introverted woman, how to take care of yourself if you are. And I really appreciated her insight on really empowering introversion as a character, as a part of you, as just who you are instead of as a negative component of yourself, that this is just something that is within some of us, just like being an extrovert is just who you are, but to value that so that you can take care of yourself and restore your energy as an introvert. So so I hope you enjoyed the conversation. Again, thank you to subscribers and listeners. I appreciate your support, your loyalty, your showing up each week. I will see you next week on the Woman Warriors podcast. Ciao for now from This Woman Warrior. Thanks for listening and subscribing to the Woman Warriors podcast. 
Music was written and performed by Andy Cush. If you'd like more information on this episode, you can find the show notes, the resources shared today, and links to the guests' profiles at womanwarriors.com.